How Online Casino is Destroying Asia. Pogos, aka Philippine offshore gaming operator, hires employees in the thousands, mostly from Asia, since they have to communicate with the customers, the bulk of whom are also in Asia. The online casino centers required huge footprints to house thousands of employees and expanded to occupy more than 1 million square meters of office space in 2019. The Pogos operate with a hierarchy where the owners and financiers sit at the very top and most often live overseas in the middle. There are supervisors who work on location at the Pogo site to manage the front lines. The frontliners are the car dealers for their online casino marketing personnel back in taxable short and customer support. Their job was to communicate directly with customers who had questions like how to play the games and also requests to withdraw their winnings. They recruit young, attractive women who deal at actual casino tables that have been set up in the Pogo buildings. This is an example of the kind of attire they were forced to wear while on the job hunt. But instead of having real customers seated in front of them, cameras, film, and broadcast this via online gambling sites, the employees feared for their lives. Many displaced Asian nationals are stuck in limbo in the Pogos. Their fear of the authorities is not misplaced. It is an industry that needs a small army of workers. The numbers rise and fall, and like many things in this opaque industry, are likely underrepresented by official data. But industry groups estimate that some 23,000 Philippine nationals work in the Pogo sector. The number of foreign nationals far eclipses that figure, with an estimated 300,000 Chinese workers alone working in the industry at its height. Other foreign nationals, including those from Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam, were also employed by POGOS. At the industry's peak, it grew to include 281 registered operators. But because of the murky nature of the entire sector, there were in reality far more. A lot of the online gambling firms in the Philippines. They act, as I would say, a big gaming hub where they mean the gaming hub. They end up as a big rip in legal cover for many macro gaming firms and micro gaming firms. They end up these places when the Pogos and the Bogus end up giving this micro gaming firms legal, regulatory, and I would say fiscal shields from the say. The Philippine government or from the public, it created a sort of Russian nesting doll of sub companies. One where a legitimate surface operation hit a dark industry of smaller and smaller companies. The estimated amount of revenues that the Pogo industry has to generate it reach around $500 million annually. Criminal organizations have initiated targeting individuals associated with the industry, leading to a surge in kidnappings and shootouts involving unions. As a result, Philippine legislators started advocating for the prohibition of the industry in 2019 prompted by the escalating stories of the Pogo's crime wave that garnered widespread attention in the media. The other unhappy Pogo employees have also run away from their employers. But some of them ended up back in the hands of their employers. In 2022, such prostitution dens became the subject of a Philippine Senate panel investigation. Senator Risa Hontiveros uncovered a trafficking scheme that offers sexual services to workers of so-called Philippine offshore gaming operators, or POGOS. Prostitution rings are now operating like food delivery businesses. Aside from prostitution, POGOS have been linked to other crimes, including kidnappings of migrant workers. Foreign workers became valued commodities as labor became scarce due to pandemic-linked travel restrictions. Some victims reported being raped by their abductors. There's also the use of violence among POGO sections. Dead bodies of Chinese nationals have been seen in abandoned blocks and suspected kidnappers found to possess unlicensed firearms. So, Philippine lawmakers began calling for why their ban on the industry in 2019, as stories about the Pogo's crime wave began to capture attention in the local press. Authorities were able to conduct a series of rescue operations of kidnapped foreign nationals, with one incident leading to human trafficking. But it would be the pandemic itself that dealt the biggest blow to the industry. The Pogos industry peaked in 2019 before shrinking significantly by 2021. Today, there are 32 registered Pogos in the Philippines, a 47.5% drop from the industry's height. The new administration of Philippine President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos is far more critical of the industry. They steadfast commitment to combating illicit activities. 
In 2022, the Philippine government said it would stop the operations of 175 POGOs. Now lawmakers are going farther, calling for a total ban on the online gaming industry.